This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Edge don't want you to hear them. You're on the school board? I am. I've got a question for you. Sure. I understand that there have been now 50, 50 cases of head lice per month. That's what I, I read in the paper. Okay, I don't. Uh, is it right to force kids to be in those buildings of yours if there are 50 cases of head lice per year there? I have voted against changing the policy, so, uh, you know, majority rules, but I was in the minority. I should have said month, not year. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I, oh, man, the policy I don't fully understand. I don't know what the implications of voting for or against the policy it's The is, old policy, is, to my understanding, was if they found head lice, they would send you home. They'd contact the parents and the child would go home. Yeah. The new policy is, is and this is pushed by, I don't know, the CDC or whoever, um, pediatricians and things like that saying that you don't have to send them home, you just have to warn the parents to treat them. I understand that it's been sort of taken off the communicable disease list in Manchester, is that? I'm not sure about that part. There's, a, I guess, a quote here from Tim Soucy. He says that uh, he's the, the health Manchester health director. He says, quote, uh, widespread notification could cause undue stress and finger pointing, unquote. Do you that, support that was, his position? No, I, I, I voted against changing the policy. Um, and we're seeing, you know, we're seeing outbreaks from it. Again, I, there was only a few of us, uh, maybe three or four of us, that probably didn't want to change the policy, unfortunately. What do you think should happen to a taxpayer that says, you know, I shouldn't be forced to pay to, to, to force those kids to be in those buildings? I'm just going to stop paying. What should happen to that taxpayer? You know, that's a good question. That, but anybody could say that. You know, for instance, somebody who doesn't agree with uh, the ACA, the Obamacare, I'm not going to pay my taxes. That's pretty good reason. <laughs> or uh, I don't want to pay for uh, the military, so I'm going to stop paying my... I mean, we'd have anarchy. Would it, that be worse than what we have now? <laughs> uh, and again, I, you know... This mine. Oh. <laughs> um, I guess I lost my train of thought, but, you know, it, it's the majority rules, and, and unfortunately, if it's, if, you know, it's something strongly immoral or... You know, like bad. torture, you know, yeah. mass killings of babies and stuff like that, you know, shooting down of journalists and blowing them up here in the States. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of good reasons to not pay, but this is just one of them, head lies. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, for, even though I'm against it, I still think that would be a stretch. Even I, you know, think I should pay my taxes even though I didn't get what I wanted. Are they really your taxes? I actually pay real estate taxes, yeah. I mean, Actually, obviously, I we, pay federal taxes. all of us pay some taxes. There's no way to get uh, around it, but I'm not sure they're really yours. Um, yeah. Well, I guess some people don't pay income tax. I pay, because I know I just did my federal income tax not too long ago. I actually owed the federal government some money, and yeah. uh, so I had to pay them, and, and I pay real estate taxes, too. You, now, you mean as far as I don't have a say of what happens with them? Is that what you mean? Well, I, th I think you don't really even have that much of a say in Manchester, although if you put a lot of work into it, you could change one thing. You know, I put a lot of work into the tax cap, and there's a tax cap now, and I think I made the difference. But it, it did, it, although it, I think it might be overridden this year, from, from what they all the over, over, Oh yeah, they'll override it sometimes, but at least it's going to be in the papers when they do. Mm. You know, but that was just one. Of the, I mean, that's the only case I can ever name of all the political activism I've ever done where I actually made the difference between something happening and not happening. Most of what I've done has never really made that much of a difference, and I'm halfway powerful for an act, act, individual citizen without mm. a, without a position. So. Well, I know if I'm originally from Mass and. Uh, came up here about 18 years ago and pretty much almost anything I wanted never happened. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's worse than that. It's better here. But you're part of the better as far as I'm concerned if you, you know, at least answering questions because a lot of politicians won't. I appreciate it. I, I saw, I recognize your picture from the new list of school board members and uh, yeah, forgot but, your name, uh, but. I know, I'm pretty sure, I know John Avard was strongly against changing the policy. Yeah. I think Art Beaudry was against it. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, possibly Deb um, Gagnon. Langton. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I think there was only four or five of us that didn't want to change. And now a lot of the parents are upset. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, and j just to go back to the lies, is uh, that's okay. Um, they're saying, you know, a knit is not a lies because uh, I guess one of the arguments was is that if you see a knit, well, that's not communicable. It's not necessary. <laughs> but it's like the chicken and the egg. If you see a, if you see a knit on your child's hair, <laughs> There's a lice that laid that, and, and the, the, yeah. lice don't typically leave ahead unless there's a good reason to. You know, if they brush up against something else, it's a chemical that forces them. Right. Yeah. Or, so if you see, and, and I've, I'm a pharmacist, so I've had, you know, parents come in and ask me to look at their children's head for, for and uh, lice are really hard to see. 
Uh, knits easy because they're, they're, they're stuck onto the stock of a hair. They're not going to move. But a, a lice are kind of translucent and they move. And, and if a child has long, thick hair, they're, they're really difficult to yeah. see and to find. And then, you know, they come home. If they give it to other kids, it's in the bedding. It's, uh, and, and the other thing is, is that I brought up in the meeting, a lot of, uh, although Mr. Susi didn't agree with me, I think that lice are starting to become resistant to the chemicals because so many people are permethrin, which is the primary chemical. So many people are using that, and if you don't use it correctly, um, I, I think it's causing some resistance. And, and yeah. apparent from a lot of people, it's taking three, four, or more treatments to get rid of the lice. And again, you're, you know, you can communicate the lice to other people during right. that time until you kill them. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Hey, no problem. Never did get your name. I'm Ross. Oh, okay. Ontario. Ross, yeah. I LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.